Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. You've probably heard about deep research from Gemini and OpenAI. It's a really popular agent use case where you have an agent autonomously crawl the web, focus on some topic that you give it, and produce a deeply researched report on that topic. Now, there's been a number of open source implementations of this, and I want to showcase ours here and walk through it in detail, but also talk about some of the other implementations, both open source and from OpenAI and Gemini, talk about some of the trade-offs. So you have kind of a general overview of this use case and some various implementations that have been put out there, open source and closed. So first, this is our assistant called Open Deep Research, fully open source. I'm in LangGraph Studio right now. If you follow the, re the readme in the repo, you can easily spin this up in like one command. And you're going to give a topic. So I just pass a topic that I'm interested in researching. I hit submit. And what we're going to see is our assistant is going to generate a report plan. It uses some search queries to help generate that plan. And it presents us with the sections of the report which you can see right here. So we can actually see there's an introduction section, there's a section overviewing the three different frameworks, comparative analysis, and it actually tells you what the description or what's kind of the scope of each section. And so really what's happening here is our assistant takes a topic, does a bit of research, but just kind of a light phase of web research to help seed its plan generation, presents it with a plan. Now we're asked then, does it meet our needs? And we can just hit continue and we can right here pass any feedback we want. Now let's say I want individual sections on each of these frameworks. You can see we actually have combined section here. I can pass that as feedback. Cool. So we can see we now have sections on Langchain, Langgraph, and Langsmith individually. So that's nice. We can say we're happy. We go continue. And we just pass true to say that the plan does indeed meet our needs. So we simply run that. Now we're actually going to do the deep research phase. So for each of those sections, you can see what's happening. We generate search queries, run web search, write the section, and we do a reflection, as you see here, on that section content relative to the section topic to see if there's any missing information, and we search again. So you can see there's this iterative search process, which I'll show in a minute, is highly configurable. So this is kind of that deep research phase where you can do iterative research in parallel across all the sections of, of your report. Now, after all the main body sections are written that require research, we write any final concluding or introductory sections and we get our full report here, which you can see is a nice markdown. Each section laid out nicely with sources and a nice comparative table in the final section. Now you can click this button, open the run in Langsmith. And here you actually can review the trace so of course, this is all open source. You can look at every single model call, every single search query. So you have a lot of visibility into everything that happens under the hood. You can also see time and token usage. So if I pop out and generalize a little bit, what are kind of the main themes in this overall deep research area? Well, I kind of think about this in two different ways. There is some kind of report planning phase or structuring, and then there is what you might consider the deep research, some kind of iterative research loop. Those are like the two big ideas that you see across a lot of these methods. Now, the planning phase typically involves some human loop, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. There's different approaches there, but there's some overall report structuring with human feedback often. And then following that, or in some cases without that at all, there is this iterative research that can be done. So you don't actually need this planning and structuring phase. Some approaches don't include it, but all approaches use some kind of iterative research. That's a core component. And you can break it down like this. So again, I just mentioned that some approaches have a planning with human in the loop, others don't. So they operate more autonomously without any kind of initial scoping with the user in the loop. And you can also think about the architecture. So some use what you can consider a tool calling agent. Others use what I consider to be a workflow. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So if you look at this top quadrant here, both Gemini Deep Research and OpenAI Deep Research involve some kind of human loop in the planning phase. They're a little bit different. So Gemini produces a plan that you can then review and edit and approve. OpenAI Deep Research actually does question answering. So it asks you some kind of follow-up questions. It doesn't quite explicitly lay out a plan for you, but it does ask clarifying questions. And so there is still a human in loop phase as noted there. Now, as you just saw, this is ours, Open Deep Researcher. And as mentioned, it does produce a plan that you can then provide feedback on. And that follows more closely with Gemini Deep Research than OpenAI, which just asks clarifying questions. And so there's different ways you can think about doing that kind of human in loop scoping or planning. And those are at least two. One is you generate an explicit plan of all the sections of the report. 
The other is you ask some clarifying questions. Now there's a number of other approaches that just do that iterative deep research after a user passes a topic. So they don't do any kind of, kind of upfront planning. Now let me talk about the architectures a little bit. So Hugging Face released an open deep researcher that very nicely shows a tool calling agent. In this case, they're using their small agents library. They use hierarchical agent approach. As you see here, they have a manager agent and they have a tool calling agent. And they use a number of tools from a different paper from Microsoft, but it basically involves tools for searching the web, navigating, inspecting pages, and also some multimodal tools for extracting images. So it's a really neat implementation that's worth having a look at. Now, of course, we don't know precisely what Gemini or OpenAI Deep Research do under the hood, but speculation is, of course, that they are using some kind of tool calling agent with OpenAI Deep Research. We know it's a fine tuned version of O3 that has been refined for web search. But in all these cases, the architecture is likely what we consider a classic agent where you have an LLM with a bunch of bound tools. Those tools can be called in any particular order. Uh, so they're very flexible. Now that contrasts a little bit to what I consider to be workflows. If you look at some of these open source implementations, for example, we can pull one up here right here. This is one popular deep research implementation. And you can see if you look at this, this is what I consider a classic workflow. Now, some people call this an agentic workflow because it does have some steps where an LLM reasons and decides what to do next, which is completely fine. But it still follows a pretty clear control flow that's stipulated by the user. So basically it does search, processes the results in some way, kind of reflects on the learnings and iterates for some number of cycles and then produces a report at the end. Okay, now as we saw, this is looking at ours. It also follows a particular control flow that we specify with opportunities for human feedback and iteration there and iteration autonomously within each section. So again, I consider this to be a workflow that we lay out ahead of time. And of course we do allow LLMs to reflect and refine their work, but this is not like just an LLM with a set of tools that is free to call those tools in any particular order. We set a constrained control flow and there's always a trade off between using an, an open ended tool calling agent versus what I consider a workflow here. Often the benefit of workflow is that you provide more scaffolding for reliability and often lower token usage, but it can lack some flexibility. So it's an interesting architectural trade off to think about with different approaches. But in any case, there are a number of these open researchers that utilize workflows. So it's obviously a pretty reasonable way to approach this particular problem of deep research. Now I'll mention briefly that some of these deep research approaches have been evaluated. So Gaia is one particular evaluation from Meta and Hugging Face. And you can see that OpenAI Deep Research scores quite well. And Hugging Face's approach is 55. So obviously strong results that are close to OpenAI Deep Research on this particular evaluation. Now OpenAI actually shared results on Humanity's Last Exam, which is an evaluation from Scale AI and involves 3000 questions across STEM and humanities. And you can see OpenAI Deep Research outperforms O3 alone by quite a large margin, which makes sense because you endow O3 with search tools and it is then much more capable at challenges like this. Now I briefly showed how ours works at the beginning and you might ask the question, well, why use an open source deep research assistant if you can just use Gemini or OpenAI? So the argument I'd make is it's about configurability. And the nice thing about open source research assistants is that they are very, very configurable. And I highlight all the configuration options with our open deep researcher here. So I'll talk about these a little bit below, but you can actually pass an outline to specify the report structure that you want. You can specify whatever planner model you want. So I've used DeepSeq. I use O3 mini currently as the default, but I like to use a reasoning model to do this initial thinking and then plan generation. I can customize how I want human in the loop to work. In this case, I basically do human in the loop review of the sections of the report. And then in the deep research phase itself, I can configure a number of things, both the number of searches per iteration and the number of total iterations to do. So how many times do I want to loop back and forth? And very interestingly, I can also specify the search API. So by default, we're configured for Tavoli, but I also have perplexity setup, which is a really interesting option and other search services like you know, obviously SERP API or Firecrawl could be incorporated easily. So 
Configurability is really the benefit you get from open source, in addition to the fact that it can be quite a bit less expensive. So if I go back to Studio, I'll just show you where those configurations can be set. That's all right here. So if you just open up that tab, you can see I can specify a report structure, I can specify my search API, specify the writer model. In this case, it's configured for Claude, and I pick 3.5 Sonnet. But of course, you can change this if you'd like. I again have my planner model set and planner provider, OpenAI or Grok. Grok is set for DeepSeek if I want to use that as my planner. Search depth and number of queries are all configurable. And what I like to do is if I change these in Studio, I can then very simply create a new configuration. This is my perplexity search, which I can just activate right up here. And then that configuration is set. And if I rerun, I'll be using that particular configuration which uses perplexity. Now let me show some example results. So this is a report that I generated using and Claude as my writer. And you can see, I can really nicely lay out the structure of the report that I want using that report structure configurable field. So I get this nice table, again, nicely cited sections, sections that deep dive on each of the providers individually. Cool, so I asked about together, fireworks and grok, a nice overview and a nice summary at the end. Now let's compare to OpenAI Deep Research for that same input topic. So you can see I passed a question. Now what's interesting is it will ask me some follow-up questions and I provide my answer and it does some work and produces this detailed report on the inference market. So a few things to point out. One, the clear benefit of Gemini or OpenAI Deep Research is it will crawl a large number of pages by default for you and it cites things very nicely in line. So the search and citation functions are really strong by default with these services. The configurability and the customization in the report flow can be drawbacks depending on your need. So you can see this report reads as a bit of like a data dump, which is fantastic for some use cases. If I want something that's a little bit more digestible depending on my audience, then I may want more configurability in how it's structured or laid out. And so those are some of the trade-offs. Really, it's about configurability and ability to use new, for example, models or new search tools as they come out versus the proprietary offerings here providing very well-cited but less configurable reports. Of course, cost is a consideration. In this case, Pro is $200 a month versus most of the reports I've generated are less than 50 cents. And you can easily configure that, make it cheaper if you'd like using different models. So there's obviously a cost consideration here as well. So hopefully that gives you an overview of the various deep research approaches and some of the trade-offs. Um, I'm a big fan of both Gemini and OpenAI Deep Research, of course. I also am really interested in some of the open source deep researchers uh, for reasons as mentioned, in particular configurability, and especially the ability to just roll in new models as they come out. So I'd like to be able to test, for example, new releases really rapidly on this use case, and open source deep researchers let you do that. Also new search services. So I just recently incorporated Perplexity Sonar Pro uh, through their API and it significantly enhances the report quality. And so the ability to just pull in new, new tools is a really fun part of the open source deep researchers. But without question, the offerings from Gemini and OpenAI are extremely strong. So it's a really great area to look into. If you have any questions or comments about our open source deep researcher or other things, uh, feel free to comment below. Thanks.